Okay, so here we are in Pyramix 11.0.5. Again, this series is to learn Pyramix coming from Pro Tools. So let's get started. There's a ton of tools here, some of them completely unique to Pyramix, others you'll recognize right away, but we'll cover all of them eventually. Let's get started by changing some of the key commands so we can get around a little easier. I've chosen several key commands to alter for basic editing functions and edit window navigation that are staples of the Pro Tools user experience and fortunately don't overlap with any of Pyramix's hotkeys. So let's go to Settings, Keyboard Shortcut Editor, and we'll go ahead and load the Pyramix preset. While all these key commands are very good, we can add to them without modifying the way Pyramix works, and we can learn Pyramix key commands as we go. But for now, let's go to View, and we'll scroll down to the Zoom functions. Let's use Pro Tools Focus Mode shortcuts. So we'll choose T to zoom in, and we'll click Assign. We'll select Zoom Out, and we'll add R, and assign that. Now if that's all we are going to change, you can get around easier, and you'll be able to follow along with me. You'll see later that I have a key logger up on screen so you won't miss anything I'm doing. But let's take this one step further and go to the edit window and make copying and pasting a little more familiar. So copy here is control C, which is pretty standard. However, for efficiency, I think I'd like to change that to just C. So we'll hit C and we'll hit assign. Then we have paste and I'd like to change that to just V. So we'll hit V and we'll hit assign again. And you'll notice I'm not changing any key commands. I'm just adding to them. So for example, if I tried to change paste to C, it would give me a warning saying that it's already occupied by another function, so I'll hit cancel because I don't actually want to do that. While we're here, let's change split to B, and we can also change trim in to cursor to A, and trim out to cursor to S. Now that should be our basic clip editing functions handled, and we can learn Pyramix key commands from here on out. Now with those things sorted out, the next thing we'll want to do is save our preset. Now if we click the X here, it'll just close the window and all of the work we just did will be lost. If you're new to Windows like I was, this can be a constant problem and take some getting used to, but now that I've spent more time on the platform, it makes more sense. I came from Mac OS where changing an item in a dialog and closing the window was enough to save it, but it's not true here. However, I'm just going to recall the preset that I made for myself and we're going to close the window. Now, essentially, this looks pretty similar to when you first make a new project in Pro Tools. You have a blank project workspace, and you have to populate it with what you'd like to do. So today, I think I'd like to listen to a stereo mix. Seems pretty simple. So I'm going to make a new project, and I'm going to make a new editing project. Now, an editing project here is pretty similar to a session in Pro Tools. So we'll leave all the other options to talk about for a later time, but we'll specify a sample rate and a bit depth. I like to leave my native pro system at 9632 because it's a pretty good balance of performance and fidelity. So we'll label this interface one and we'll just put this on the desktop and we'll hit next again. Let's use a mixer wizard because I want to start to show you how this all goes together. So we'll say finish and Pyramix will build our project for us. We can change things about it later, but basically it builds a shell and starts to do its delay compensation, routing and things like that. So with the configuration window open, we'll just click next and we'll start to build our mixer by making a stereo mixing bus. Now in Pro Tools, this would be a master fader, but in Pyramix, a mixing bus is connected to an actual output. So we'll just make one of those in stereo, but we have a ton of choices for later. So we'll click next and we'll make some strips. And a strip is an audio track in Pro Tools. So we'll just make one stereo strip and we'll hit next. And we're gonna leave the connect as many inputs and outputs as possible unchecked for now because I want to show you how the Pyramix mixer works and I think it'd be beneficial for us to do it manually. So let's click finish and Pyramix will build our project for us. Now that we've got our session open and we can see our stereo strip and our stereo mix bus, for right now let's close our mixer and let's talk about how to get media into Pyramix. Now, when I first opened Pyramix, it took me about 45 minutes before I finally decided to look for help on the internet to show me how to import files, because my inclination coming from Pro Tools was to go up to Project, Import, and we see all of these options that have nothing to do with a simple operation like just pulling in an audio file, so let's forget about that and go to where it actually is. Down on the bottom, you'll see all these tabs, and each one of these has a powerful set of tools associated with it, but the one we're gonna focus on today is the one that looks like a little tape reel. It's the Media Management tab. So we'll select that, 
and we'll navigate to a file that we want to hear. Now looking at the properties for this file, it says it's 16441 and we're in a 96k session, but that's alright because Pyramix can automatically do sample rate conversion for you in your session in real time with no additional steps. So we can just drag this file into our timeline and there it is. But let's say that we want to be more specific about where it goes in our timeline. So we'll just delete that there and we'll go back to the media management tab and we'll just pin it in place. And we want to make sure that our cursor is at zero. So if we're not at zero, we can hit the home key or we can click at the time code readout and just type a bunch of zeros and hit return. And that'll take us back to zero. So now we can use this tool called place in the current document and we can click that and it'll give us a bunch of choices about how we'd like to place this file. So I'm going to choose a pen to cursor sorted by creation date and I'm going to make sure that the left track, the topmost of a stereo pair is selected when doing this operation. The creation date part isn't really applicable here since we only have one file, but it will ignore the file's time code and place it at zero, which is exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And there it is, our file is at zero. So let's bring up our mixer with the Alt M key command. And now if we hit the space bar, we can finally hear our music. So we see the meters moving, but we're not hearing anything. So we need to connect our speakers to the software. Now, if we go below our mixing bus, you'll see a little left and right, and we can select our monitors from there. Mine live at one and two, so we'll select one and two for the left and right outputs of our mixing bus. And we can hit the space bar and play our music. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna talk more about the way the mixer works.